And joining me now is counselor to President Trump, Kellyanne Conway. Uh, Ms. Conway, welcome back to Meet the Press. Thank you, Chuck. I want to start with um, this crisis at the southern border in this respect. Does the president see this as an immigration crisis or as a refugee crisis where we basically our asylum system is under-resourced, under uh, overstressed, overtaxed um, due to what is a Central American refugee crisis? Chuck, first, thanks for acknowledging that it is a crisis. Not so long ago, uh, we had members of the mainstream media and the Democratic Party denying that that word should even be used. And no less a person than President Obama's Homeland Security Director, Secretary, excuse me, Jay Johnson has referred to it as a crisis several times. You can't look at the numbers and deny that we have a crisis. In our view, it's both a security crisis and a humanitarian crisis. We have 103,000 migrants either being apprehended or um, unable to come across the border just last month alone. And the flow is so different. For years, it was single males from Mexico who can be returned safely to their country of origin. Now we have families, increasingly family units from these three Northern Triangle countries, and unaccompanied children. Can you and I assure each other and everybody who's watching today that we know what happens to those minors once they are released into this country? Congress can fix this easily. All the time that they spend uh, reacting to every single Donald Trump tweet or the president's statements, they can sit down and do three quick things. They can fix TVPRA, which basically is a tra Trafficking Victims Act, where it becomes a magnet for young children to be taken by the arm by an adult and they know it's easier to come here. Number two, fix Flores. Flores is a judicial decision that's holding hostage our ability as a nation to just have a little bit more time to process these asylum claims. After 20 days, we must release mm -hmm. uh, children into the interior of this country. Number three, uh, fix the asylum law so that those who actually have a credible claim of asylum can have that process faster. Uh, we just have too many people, and that's why the president is looking for more money, more resources, more technology, and help from some of these cities. Everything you've said, the president, I have not heard from the president, though. Like, you've said he is not... I'm here on his behalf. I understand that, but he is saying he wants to get rid of asylum law. He wants to get rid of judges. Let me let me ask well, you this way. Not, Are you fair. We just I, had new judges in our package, uh, I, 75 new immigration judges. We need more. He said get rid of the judges. No, he's saying get... What, what does that the mean? The president then? is saying that let's stop having one or two judges in this country make immigration law for an entire country. That's Congress's job. At the retreat, no, 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 no. Wait, wait, did the he, Democrats wait, even then, come up then, with an immigration plan? The, what the, are they willing to do? I'm not talking about the... the uh, federal judges, I'm talking about immigration judges, to deal with the asylum backlog. He wanted to get rid of that. Is the implication he was saying get rid of those judges? Does he not want to have asylum judges, M more more of these judges we to deal with this backlog? We need more judges. In fact, his his 70 point immigration plan that he presented to Congress in October of 2017 mm -hmm. includes um, more judges. And I believe even what Congress was willing to pass or did pass included 75 new immigration judges and all the support that would go with that, the support staff and the like, in addition right. to new technologies at the border. So those who vote for that, those who voted for H.R. 6, the largest one piece of legislation to combat our drug crisis in our nation's history, every Democrat running for for president who's in the House or Senate voted for it, they've admitted we have a drug crisis at the border. That's where the meth and the heroin, the cocaine, the fentanyl are, are pouring over. So let's try to work together, but we have an unserious Congress that is not, is not coming to the table, and the Republicans failed to do their job when they were in charge, no doubt, and the Democrats now are failing to come together in the House. But how, is the president, but how is the president playing a constructive role here? Here's David French in the National Review earlier this week. Uh, and this is, has to do with sort of the way now his critics respond to him. You talked about the, tw the, the tweets. They're not alarmed by his bluster. They're amused. They mock him. His threats and tweets fuel the opposition and undermine his ability to make the deals he needs to make. He's testing the political utility of the opposite of Teddy Roosevelt's admonition. Speak softly and carry a big stick. Tweeting loudly and often carrying no real stick at all. Let's look at what the last four months have given us. He shut down the government. National emergency. I'll shut the border. I'm sending these migrants to sanctuary cities. What part of that is the same tone that you have had, which says, we want to sit down, we want to have more judges, we want to try to solve this. The president doesn't sound like somebody who wants to solve the crisis. Well, for him, it's all of the above. It's everything you've just said. And he has asked for Congress in his 70-point plan to do everything from end the visa lottery system to chain migration. He was willing to do a deal on the Dreamers. It's false when everybody says, oh, there was $25 million billion on the table by the Democrats, but the president walked away. That was what was allocated, not appropriated, and they know it. Uh, but in addition to that, the president has looked at many different options. Administratively, from the executive branch of the government, we've done a, 
a great deal of work. We need the legislature to step in, and we need the courts to do something like the Ninth Circuit did just on Friday, Chuck, which is at least give us some latitude on this Remain in Mexico policy. So many of the liberals want the, the illegal migrants to remain in America. Why not remain in Mexico while your claims of asylum are being processed? This is something that our secretaries, our cabinet, and the president um, brokered with Mexico. It's safe passage for those, those right. families and, and, and unaccompanied minors um, to, to remain in Mexico while their claims of asylum are being processed. But I think that, look, I think well, the rough back, rhetoric I mean, this, this, this week, you know, respectfully, came from the other side. You have this is anti-Semitic congresswoman who's been rebuked whoa, 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 by whoa, members whoa, whoa, of her own party, this now not, saying something happened to someone. Uh, you're, you're it does. No, 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 no. I know what you're trying to do here. I want to go back. With, Why? No, 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 it has to do the with president is trying to browbeat Democrats. The Democrats, the president's trying to browbeat them to come over. That's no way to get a compromise. Even Mitch McConnell is saying, enough of this already. Well, why don't and the president the keep... We'll meet them this afternoon if they'd like to come to the Why White don't you House invite them? Talk about their invite. The, the offer stands. The invitation is open. They were there several times, the leadership, as you know, uh, during, to avert a government shutdown mm -hmm. and then during it. All on this but issue. But it's always his way or the highway. He never is sitting here saying... I disagree. Uh, I okay, I, I just... To, I what, what part of shutting down the government? I'll do this. That's not how... That's not how anybody would be coerced to saying, yeah, let's sit down and have but a, see if we can come and, and reach and reach common ground. They're, they're willing, they are welcome to come. And I will tell you the Problem Solvers Caucus did come. There's a great deal of frustration among some of the rank and file members who represent more moderate districts and frankly, who represent districts that Donald Trump won in 2016, for example. Mm -hmm. They're very frustrated. They've been to the White House. They talk to people like me quietly saying mm -hmm. that they wish that the, the radical freshmen who get all the magazine covers and all the ink and air time, I guess they're very upset with the leadership today, though, because overnight or yesterday, Congress, Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib uh, tweeted that they're, she's so tired of being, they're so tired of being used to show that the party's diverse and that they can't get a seat at the table, can't get their policy issues forward, something that was reached tweeted by right. Congressman right. Ilhan Omar. So you, you, I think keep, there's trouble in it, Pelosi it, paradise, but if she I, wants I, to fix immigration, she can come. You, you keep trying to Three insert other... You, you keep trying to do these things. I want to go back to, to how the president is perhaps making this situation worse. Flores. Here is the New York Times from Wednesday. Perversely, the president's own anti-immigrant rhetoric has helped supercharge the pipeline of migrants from Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. Smugglers lately have been buying radio ads in Central America warning that Mr. Trump is about to shut down all immigration. If you ever wanted to go to the United States, they say go now. The president's words, these sort of cataclysmic words that he uses, shut down the border and all this stuff, is actually being used to encourage more people to come. By smugglers and coyotes, of course. Uh, uh, who, yes, which who is... take these people's life savings does the and president sometimes have, and, Well, will somebody tell the president he's doing this? Will somebody tell the president that his words are actually encouraging these coyotes to make money off of desperate people? Well, the coyotes and smugglers do that anyway. You know that. So uh, why give them more material? Why, no, help no, them? why give them the, material. Why help them? by lying to people. Chuck, you know that daughters the same age as ours, God forbid, are being pumped with birth control be before they come here. We are forced to give them pregnancy tests because we know how perilous that journey could be. My message to those those mothers, and I'm one of school-aged children, four of them, is don't come. It's a treacher treacherous, perilous journey. Do you know what happens there's no to them guarantee. in Honduras? Do you know what happens to no them in Honduras? Let me put this up here from the t uh, from. In 2017, 41% of women and girls killed in Honduras showed signs of mutilation, disfigurement, and cruelty beyond what was needed to kill them, according to the Violence Observatory at the National Autonomous University of Honduras. And in this story, there were some graphic descriptions that are a thousand times worse that are not uh, appropriate for Sunday morning. This is what they're escaping. This they, is why they're seeking asylum in the United States. And How do you turn present, them away? When they present their... When they present their claims of asylum, as they did in past administrations, those claims are evaluated. And people do, they are granted asylum for credible asylum uh, claims. What's happening, Chuck, is that you have those who are claiming asylum and should not be. Back to my point. Fix Flores, fix TVPRA, and fix the asylum system so that those credible claims can be processed expeditiously and fairly. But we need everybody's help. Congress cannot turn a blind eye to that. I know that they're, they're still obsessed with the 2016 campaign and investigating it. They're obsessed with the running President in plays no role in sort of cutting back and actually He's presenting himself as somebody that issue. wants to, to actually make a deal? He's made this a top issue. I uh, guarantee for his 20, you. All he talks about it is through the prism of 2020. He talks about it all the time. No. He doesn't seem to talk about it by a guy who wants the solution. No. Here we are in 2019. He's willing to have them come to the table. But they need to be serious because the president in this country doesn't make the laws. He executes 
piece of laws. Congress has to come and give that fix to Flores, which was a court decision. They can, they can fix it. They can fix TVPRA. They can tweak it. They can fix the asylum laws. They need to get back to Washington to work as hard as the people who they re represent work. Let me ask it through a foreign policy prism. Why is the president so concerned about the humanitarian crisis and the human rights of Venezuela, but not in Honduras or Guatemala or just El Salvador? No, we are, and I'll tell you why. But I, you and cut I said, off all said this aid. Almost a year we're ago, putting more. We're giving more money to, to to try to help with humanitarian efforts in Venezuela, and you just cut off aid almost completely. To the three, to to Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador. What's the difference? Now everybody sees what's happening in Venezuela and how quickly it's been fomenting. Maduro, Moscow. We've made that very clear. I just told you what was happening in Honduras. Yes, to, it's, to pretty, it's, it's pretty awful. It's pretty awful. It is. And what's happening here? That these young girls are coming through. Do you? Do we know? Can we say with confidence we know what happens to them? We act like they're released into the interior of the U.S. and they definitely have a family member or a sponsor or a way of life and safety and, and mm -hmm. safe passage, Chuck, they don't. So many of them are, are trafficked. Some are murdered. Some are, some are, are treated or mistreated wherever they go. We don't know what happens to them. Shouldn't we have a system where we know better who's here and where they are and what has come I think come everybody seems to agree with something well, like this. I but, don't know. We but, don't, but can there be... much help from the other side. But think, let me ask it this way. Can you, can you treat this sort of as a temporary, like, emergency? So, for instance, the president is threatening to ship migrants. Yes, the president used the word right. emergency and crisis. All right, he to the, but believe it or not, you know, I grew up in Miami, I'm well aware of this. If he actually asked for help from cities and states, I bet you these cities would say, sure, if you need to temporarily relocate people here while they wait for their day uh, with an asylum judge, okay. What's wrong with doing it that way? Why he is it a browbeat? He that. It wasn't a browbeat. It was taken that way. It was uh, presumptive. How did he present it? Excuse me. If they want to help, they can. And some mayors have come forward and said we would like to. I help. would assume they would. Isn't the point of a sanctuary city to to offer sanctuary to illegal aliens? So this is a real plan. Process? He is going to ask for. Are you asking for mayors to call up the White House today and say yes? Sure. Or send they're us welcome your to visit. I recently addressed the conference of mayors. I know others from the administration have. This issue was raised in terms of how can we all work together on many crises of the day. Uh, immigration is one of them. Opioids was another that we, criminal justice reform is something else we talked about, workforce development. So certainly we want to work with it with the nation's mayors. But if you look at a city like Philadelphia, mm -hmm. you have a mayor there who won't share information with ICE anymore, which means that we don't even know who's there, why they're there, how long okay. they're there. But by the way, there's a, there's a circular mm -hmm. logic about this. If the president believes we're full, why does he want to help basically create a permanent way for these because the people to stay are coming here anyway, as you know. Okay. But what I'm saying is, 103,000 came. These are unprecedented numbers. Three short months ago, when the president addressed the nation in a prime, the only primetime oval of his presidency, you had a response from Leader Schumer and Speaker mm -hmm. Pelosi, where they said. It's a lie that it's a crisis. That's manufactured word. Uh, now people like you, like Jay Johnson, respected people, are, are admitting it is a crisis. We do have an emergency. So what are the solutions? I've laid out simple solutions Congress can work on. Mm -hmm. I think the person who's running for the nomination by a Democrat who comes up with an immigration plan, rather than a, a government takeover mm -hmm. health care like Medicare for All or Green New Deal, that person is going to distinguish himself or herself. Because right, right now, yeah. the two front runners for the Democrats, according to plan, right on schedule, are the two wh old white male career politicians. Okay. Somebody who comes out with a plan on immigration, okay. wants to work with the president ahead of time and not kick it into 2020, will prevail. Was the president informed in advance of what was going to happen to Julian Assange? Not to my knowledge. I certainly wasn't. I so he did least. not know in advance not to what my was going to happen. The federal government, that whatever deal was made uh, with the UK and any of that stuff was I the State Department. I, I'm sorry, I don't okay. know because that's the State Department, the Department of Justice, Department of Justice. But you don't State believe the president was briefed in advance? Um, I don't. I don't know, and I don't think so. And I just want to say one more thing. And having discussed this with him yeah. after the fact several times, uh, the president believes that those who publish classified information um, should not do that. In other words, that goes for a major so publication. You think she should criminalize it? Well. He should criminalize. No, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, remember, Julian Assange is not being indicted because he was a journalist. Right. He's being indicted because he hacked. Same thing with uh, Private Manning. And, and so anybody who's publishing classified information, in our view, should think thrice before they do that because you can imperil folks. It's also why I think it's part of why some of the redactions will come out in the Mueller report. You're protecting okay. sources and methods. You're protecting grand jury information. You're protecting third parties who haven't been indicted and, and certainly won't be impeached. I know they want to embarrass and harass the president where they couldn't impeach and indict him. Uh, but uh, And we'll see what happens with that. I'm going to have to leave it there. Kelly. Thank you for having me, Chuck. It's nice to have you. Nice. To
Uh, I'll see the Democrats in the White House later today. I look forward to it. When we come. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.